Hey everybody, welcome. This is Pam at the Paper Outpost and today, um, hey, guess what happened? My new digi kits arrived. That's right. So uh, I created these and these are, I think, I think these are some of the coolest ones ever. Um, in my, these are, I, I just really love the way these came out. So let us take a look at these and a quick peek and then we are going to um, make something with one of these so you can get familiar with how to use uh, digi kits. So in each digi kit, there's five pages. You can buy them in my Etsy shop online. There's um, um, over 240 uh, DigiKit themes to pick from. So this particular first one is called Dragonfly Dance. And I'm really excited about this one. It's pretty. Um, it's one of my favorites I've ever made. So um, as you can see, there's lots of different dragonflies. So if you like nature or um, uh, forest, uh, uh, woods, themes, things like that, fairy themes, this would also go with that, um, uh, to give you ideas on, on how you can incorporate this into your junk journal. But these are really pretty, and they can be used for journal pockets, tucks, uh, belly bands, uh, kitty corner tucks, uh, cover art, so many different things. And also remember, if you don't have a printer or don't like to print, I do have a print and mail service. Well, I will I will print them out for you. Ten, up to 10, uh, you pick 10 DigiKit names. All you need to do is buy the print and mail option and then send me the list of 10 DigiKit names. I only need the first two or three words to know which ones you're talking about. And then I will um, send them to me through Etsy message or um, email the list to me. I will print them out on this nice lightweight cardstock, so it has. It's not like uh, printer paper. It's thicker than that, so it's it's thin enough not to bulk up your junk journal too much, but thick enough to be structurally sound for uh, the pockets, the tucks, the you know bookmarks, things like that. You can just have a lot of fun with these. Okay, so there we go. Um, put that over there, that is Dragonfly Dance. The next one is a really pretty one. Um, this is called Fairy Flutter. Okay, so here we go. This is Fairy Flutter, and I think these are really, really beautiful images. And the neat thing about these is they are, uh, there are probably mostly black and white, so they're gonna go in any junk journal uh, color theme, which is kind of neat. But I did toss in a few colored ones at the end just so you can get an idea. And you can also color these in with a uh, colored pencil or a chalk or pastel or a marker, whatever you like, so you can actually have some fun with them and uh, color match them to any junk journal as well. And here you're going to see an example of a colored one. Uh, this is one I made uh, that is colored, um, but you can definitely color them in. They're so cute, aren't they? They're really pretty. Uh, so if you, uh, here's some ones that I did in color as well. So that just completely changes the way they look. Um, I think they're really, really kind of cool. Okay, so hope you like those. Fairy Flutter. And this is a really awesome one. It, this is Santa's Workshop. So um, I do have a Christmas 2023 DigiKit out already, but this is in addition to because I just, I just fell in love with these images. So um, we had to make a DigiKit, and the we is me and Sunshine. Yeah, so there you go. Um, we were very busy making these. He, he paw approved all of these. Aren't they gorgeous? I mean, these would be make really cool Christmas tags. You could just print these out and on the back put the two in the from. Wouldn't that be awesome? Or you could make Christmas ornaments out of them. You can put them on greeting cards. They're all just, just perfect for that. So if uh, Santa is your thing, I got you covered with him and his workshop. So there's five pages of Santa. Is there five pages of Santa? I feel like for some reason, no, there's six pages of Santa. There should only be five pages of Santa. One, two, three, one, two, four, five. There are five pages of Santa, yes, okay. Yeah, we get a little squirrely, <laughs> me and Sunny over here at the paper outpost every once in a while. Um, yeah, never know, you know what I mean? Okay, so there's five pages of Santa's workshop. And then the next one is, I thought I'd bring a, breathe a little spring life into things now because maybe, maybe as we approach winter, and Christmas, you are actually starting to craft for the spring. So with Valentine's coming up, spring flowers coming up just around the crafter corner, and we do tend to craft early sometimes if we're doing things. Um, so I did Rosie Posey, and this is Rosie Posey, kind of vintage style, 
um, mysterious style roses of all different kinds. Again, if you're a botanical, a floral lover, a nature lover, um, these are great to have in your back pink pocket uh, because they are very ethereal and mystical and beautiful. Will also go very well with fairy or dragonfly or um, you know anything related to nature or gardening or um, just if you're a, a, a rose lover, you're going to have lots of options here to pick. Um, from. So there you go. That is Rosy Posy. All right. I do have another rose, did you get? But this is different. So just so you can, I mean, there's so many different ways you can do roses. So the last one is called Candy Vintage. So we have some food aficionados out there, and these are kind of fun. Um, they're very uh, vintage in style. Uh, just plethora of candies. Maybe you're making something for the kids or or yourself or family or friends who happen to like candy. Um, and this is going to be um, just kind of fun and whimsical and just something to play with. Candy colored things. Just, um, you know, parkins back the day when we used to go to the candy shop. The penny, the penny shop, penny candy. Remember that? Is, is there a, even such a thing anymore? Um, it's probably like at least a dollar now for a piece, I'd imagine. Like, everything's just gone crazy these days. So that is, um, oh, I should have called it Penny Candy. That would have been a better name. Candy Vintage. Oh, you know, these, these rocket I ideas happen after the fact sometimes. Oh, well. Um, so anyway, I thought we would play with um, a page from Dragonfly. And all these ones are so pretty. Maybe we'll just take... Um, Oh, I don't know. Maybe this one. This is a very pretty one. And we're going to cut it up and just do some fun things with it. So you can kind of get an idea of what is going down. Now, just so you know, I do have a mega bonus fundle bundle. Is that right? Mega bonus Christmas fundle bundle going on right now. Uh, we are less than half left. Um, they are going quickly. They're available in my Etsy shop. And if you're interested in one before they run out, um, just hop on over there, pick yourself up uh, a fundle. You can either buy the mega bonus one or the one that says fundle. You're both, I just put both in case people, I probably confuse people by doing that, but either one, you will get the mega bonus. And what is the mega bonus you say? Well, in addition to the 100 plus pieces of interesting ephemera um, that are already included in a regular fundle, you're gonna get 25 extra pieces, which is gonna combination of some Christmas ephemera, some fabric, um, and really, really cool laces and trims and um, some different things that you don't ne necessarily uh, get in a regular fundle. So, and then there's also a book page from, let me show you this book, which is a very old book that is apart now, um, but it is from 1833, making the book page 100 and 90 years old, if Pam did her math right. So if you would like to have a Gothic German book page suitable for framing or whatever you like or using in your uh, junk journal, um, at, there you go. Um, you will can have a piece of history. So if that's something special that you would like to have, maybe you don't come across that in your regular life, uh, but there you go. So these are uh, the mega, what a mouthful, huh? The mega Christmas Mega bonus Christmas bundle bundle also comes with free shipping, priority mail shipping. So I do my best to get them out to you as fast as possible because I know we're all excited and we want to get st started crafting. I know we're, we live in the age where things come quickly. So I, I try to get things quickly to you because I, I know I, I, me too. I want my things quickly. Um, so yes, less than half left. Get them, get them all I can. Um, but these are the new digi kits right now, and let's just, well, maybe we're going to leave you together. Okay. All right, there we go. All right, so I, I left this one together because I thought maybe we would do maybe a little booklet or something like that, just so you can see what it looks like when you keep them together. Uh, let me get this edge off. Maybe we'll do that little booklet first. So... And, and things don't always have to be complicated or difficult. Sometimes you can just make a, a, a fun set of things. So we'll just kind of play here. Um, uh, fun little ideas to add to any junk journal. And if you do an eclectic junk journal, meaning 
Um, it has no particular style. It's just you're having fun as you go, going through the book, decorating it. I kind of like to do that. Those are my favorite. Um, then you can splash these in anywhere along the way. You can um, create as you go a page, or you can um, make these ahead of time, and then they're ready to go. And it really doesn't take that long to decorate a junk journal. If you have a lot of stuff pre-made, and you can categorize your stuff, you can keep it in. Here's nature stuff. Here's flower stuff. Here's bird stuff. Here's, you know, that kind of thing. Or here's stuff for guys. Or, you know, you can do it a lot of different ways. Um... All right, so I think let's just, we'll start with something very simple. Let's just take a pair, uh, a piece of, let's take a pair of those very fancy, expensive, no, they're not, designer scissors, just so we can get pretty edging on this. And that will just amp up what we have here to another level. We're always going, we're going to the next prettiness factor. Um... And I think I'm going to ink this baby a little bit to make it pop a little. I'm going to bring over my drawer of daubers. And if anybody needs to know, dauber is spelled like this. Weird, huh? Yeah, I know. It really should be D-O-B-B-E-R. And I, I take issue that it is not. I, I don't sleep well at night because of it, but I've learned to live with it. There you go. Um... Looking for the pink one. Found the pink one. I know it, it took a ride through the brown once. Oh well, we'll just roll with it. See what happens. Okay, this is starting to look like pink brown. Maybe I can wake it up a little bit with some spray. This is water, just water. Maybe I'll breathe the pink back into it. Move it around, remind it. Oh, that looks even more brown. I think I took the brown off of here and put it on there. Well, you know, it's, it's more vintage looking. What, what can I say? You know, certain things fussing about. Okay, I get, it's coming out pink. Pinky brown, but it's coming out pink. I do see some pink. Which, the pinky brown is not a bad color to work with. Um, there you go, Tim Holtz. I just created a new color for you. Pinky brown, okay? <laughs> Works well, okay. So I think that's already pretty, right? So, um, yeah, I think what I'd like to do is I'm just going to take a book page... And this is from the Heartthrob book. It's just a book that I, I found, and we made a journal out of the cover and, and put some of the, It's a book of poems related to the heart. So now this particular page is not super big. I'll just tell you exactly how big. It's less than eight tall and five and a quarter wide. So this, in general, my, my journals um, are eight and a half to five and a half on average, or eight by five, that kind of stuff. So this is smaller, what I'm trying to say is it's smaller than a, a regular journal page. So I can do something on this page, decorate it like this, and then I can glue the whole thing down to a junk journal page. Um, uh, and now let's say it was too big. Well, you can always come along and do one of these maneuvers. You can make the page smaller. There you go. Now you've got a smaller page, which looks kind of cool in the grand scheme of things with the little ruffled edge. So don't worry if your pages are, are too big. You can adjust them. This isn't working well at all. Let me try it, turning this over. This is the handy trick of the whopperoo, and it works much better. So if you get the sharp edge of your metal ruler down, because this tends to have a sharper edge than a plastic ruler, or maybe even a wooden ruler, um, there you go. Okay. So that's kind of pretty. I like that. I think I even want to take a little bit more off this side. I'm going to flip it over for ease. Yeah, that was a, a great ease there, let me tell you. Why not? We're going all the way around. And I have to, I have to, see? See, it is easier when the metal side is down. You heard it here, folks. Okay. I'm going to put that there. I could also just put it in the middle. But I think I'm going to put it off to the side so a person can kind of get a peek at what the little uh, uh, poem was about. This one happens to be motherhood. All right, I'm going to get my little glue. This is how I keep my glue. I know it's kind of weird looking, but it works for me. Um... Is that the right one? No, this one? No. Oh my God. Going in here. This is this is really how it's done. This is my Fabrifix glue. This is a water bottle covered in pretty stuff. I, I keep it upside down so the glue is at the ready. And I put it in a Sugar Bells icing piping bottle so it's easy to transfer a small stream of glue without using too much because 
it uh, makes your glue go farther and you don't really need that much you know what i mean so there i'm done i can put this aside it can be ready to go when i'm ready to play all right so let's see what else we have the little booklet idea okay so um let's just fold this in half oh something tells me i think i have some some perfect sized uh let's see if i can do something with this i have some scraps here Maybe we can do something. Maybe we can make a little. Oh, here we go. Here we go. We're going to make, um, you, you could staple some books in, books, some signatures in here. But I think what I'd like to do is just make a little um, notebook on this side. So this is going to be pretty easy. I'm just going to take maybe two, three of these. Um, yeah. Okay, so, well, you could, you could fold them all together. Let's do this. And, and you can also stagger them a little bit. That gives kind of a nice, because you can sort of see what's coming then, which is kind of cool. Okay, let's see if I'm making this up as I go. Let's see if we can do it. All right, good to do that. Okay, so now we have that. Now, obviously, it doesn't fit, so how are we going to make it fit? We're going to tear it the same way, or we could use the fancy scissors. Um, let's try the fancy scissors. How what I doesn't need to be it. So it's got to be about to here so let's make, just make a little mark there that's where I'm heading it's like the general heading direction so no measuring required notice that okay okay so now we have that's gonna fit now lengthwise obviously we need to do a little adjustment um, and you can you know attach this a million and one ways but I'm gonna go for the we're gonna call it that the stank and easy way um, First, we're going to ink it up a little bit. Since I'm already working with the pink here, we'll just keep going with that little thing. What color was this? I don't think I told you. It is worn lipstick. And we're going to go down the side because we're going to decorate that. This is going to help it pop against the white. I could do something on the white, but I think I'm going to leave it and just use this as the color. And I'm going to tear this a little bit, so don't get all excited yet. Settle down. Okay, so a couple ways to do this. If you don't want to have a, anything on the outside, Okay, we have it, oh, let me make a little bit on the edges here, and that's going to show the distinction between the, uh, the pages. See, that shows up a little better. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to staple this free form here and make sure I get the, all three. With this Tim's Tiny Attacher, it's a mini stapler. It's got a weird name, Tim. Um, but it's, it's memorable because of that, I think. Okay, so now... I did not staple it through here. I stapled it on here so that I can glue the back page on there. And that way it is going to, oh, okay, you wanna be careful. Just glue the very back page. I made a little mistake here. Don't go onto the other two. We want those free. So yeah, you, you get in there with your fingers and you start rolling the silicone glue off because you don't want it to be sticky. And it'll, it'll roll right off before mayhem has ensued. Just free it up a little bit because we, we do make a little, Little bluebirds of error occasionally as we are crafting and we retreat and we reapproach again. That's what we do. Okay, so we're going in. I'm gonna glue this down. Okay, snuggle it into its little place where it's gonna live. Fold it, make sure that it's going. Now, obviously too long, right? So um, I'm just gonna come along and, and tear it. You could also cut it with these. Maybe we'll try that. Um, okay, so I'm gonna make this one shorter and these are I'm going to make just a hair longer so they're going to show and this is kind of what I call the petticoat style so you get to reveal all the prettiness of what is below with the different papers that are coming so it's going to get somebody very excited about writing in this little notebook so projects don't have to be huge they can be simple and fun and um um, easy. So now I've got a couple here in the end. I might not make it, so I'm just going to cut them both at the same time, and we're going to call that a day, and it just makes it. Um, and, and it's a nice idea if you want. You don't have to, but if you want, you can go and ink the bottoms of these edges, and that just makes the whole petticoat style pop a little bit more. And I do have a video on petticoat uh, using up book pages. Just put in the word petticoat in the search field on my main channel page um, or petticoat junk journal or something that might come up in the general search on YouTube. Um, 
Okay, so I think those are the ones that are going to show. So now we have something that looks like that. So when they open it, they're going to have that. Okay, so now um, I think I'm going to... Okay, so this is like a different color, actually. So <clears throat> I think maybe brown. I'm going to grab the old vintage photo. And... Do my, oh, here's my brown dauber, which is not my pink dauber. I'm fully aware of that now. Um, just going to ink this up so it has a little bit more a vintage distinction. And I'm going to do that on the back, too. So just fun little things that you can make with any any digikits, really, or any, any pictures that you have. Just There's a lot of little ideas, a fun little add-on inside your junk journal. You can clip it onto a page with a paper clip, or you can... Um, isn't that pretty on the back? It's very pretty. Okay, so I think I'm actually going to ink the inside because I think that just lo it makes the white crisp and uh, new and that makes um, everything else look older on the inside. And I'm, I'm going to fold it back upon itself and highlight the spine so we get something that looks like that, which is kind of cool. And you can hue it in more if you want to make it more vignette-like, which is fine. It's totally up to you. And I think I'm going to finish this off by, by covering that little little doodad. And I thought I saw something floating around on my desk. Where was it? Where was it? It's gone. Okay, so I did, hang on. Okay, so I had this little box that I, I put some very tiny punches in. And I think we're just going to look in here for something that will cover that little paper clip. So that's what we're going to do. We're just going to look for a little tiny whatnot. doesn't have to be colored. We can always color it. Um, that's kind of cute. Maybe a little big. Oh, I see something colored here. That's pretty red. I don't want it that red. Maybe like that. Maybe pink it up a bit. This has a little red on it, and I'll do it the pinky brown just to have it have a little flare. And I'm just going to glue that right there to cover the paper clip. You don't have to cover the paper clip. Just something fun if you want to do it. And now I'm uh, eyeball searching for my Scotch Create glue stick. My favorite glue stick. Not sponsored, just like it. Um, so I'm doing the finger move, and then I'm covering the staple. So sometimes it's, it's that easy to cover a staple. We don't have to get all excited that we used a staple and we didn't sew it. It's okay. It's okay to use a staple every once in a while. Let me just say that. Okay. So we have this. We have that. You can put a little word on here. That would be fun. So let's just decorate that up a little bit. It would be nice if I had the word dragonfly or something like that, but of course, no, I don't. What's this? Artemis? Mugwort. Oh, that's kind of cool. Maybe I'm going to put that on here as some wordage. So sometimes if you go for contrast, that's kind of cool. Like pictures and wording, or pictures and numbers, or numbers and wording, or, um, you know, space and clutter. I mean, you can do all sorts of fun contrast things. Um... Okay, maybe we'll just put it there because um, then I won't interrupt the faces of the butter or the uh, dragonflies too much. And you can do them on an angle; it doesn't have to be anything exact. Just put it on there, and just amp takes it up a little level. You can leave this blank, um, which I might just put an accent something at the top. It doesn't have to be anything big; it can be something small. And here's something. Small, like here's a peg stamp with something small on it. And um, so I'm going to use black soot. Black soot, distressing. And I think I'm just going to, maybe I'm just going to put it in the corner. Yeah, how about that? There, that's enough, right? Yeah, just a little, ta -da, and we're done. Okay, so we have that little guy. And so far, we've just made a couple of these. I mean, these are very easy to make. Anybody can make these. They're beginner-friendly. Um, let's make something else. Let's see. Okay, so here, these three, I magically kept together. Look at that. I was trying to remember to do that, and apparently I had forgotten to do it, but I, I did it, and I'm, I'm actually pretty darn proud of myself. So um, I'm taking that home. I'm, I'm, I'm taking it with me. Um, I'm going to trim it up, make it a little bit smaller, but I think I'm going to, this is going to plan. Okay, the plan is it's going to be a belly band. And that's going to be easy to put into any junk journal. But I want to maybe make it a little fancier. What is a belly band, you say? Well, of course I don't have any junk journal close to me right now. But you glue it onto, let's say this is your, your junk journal page. 
So basically, you glue it at the top, you glue it at the bottom, and that allows you to tuck fun things underneath like stationery or ephemera, stuff like that. So that's what a belly band is as far as I understand it. Okay. Um, okay. So let's just trim this up. It's going to make it a little smaller so it fits comfortably in any junk journal that I'm making in the future. And yeah. I think I'm going to do a little rounding of the corners. Oh, I have this amazing device that is called the Cropodile Corner Chomper, which I did manage to drop. Um, it still works, which is amazing because it has two wings. I lost a wing, but it still works, so I'm, I'm good. All right, so it just rounds the corners. Yeah, pretty easy. You, you can use a, you can put a quarter or a dime and just draw the arc of the circle and then just hand trim too. You don't need this fancy thing, but it, you know, if you do a lot of corner rounding, it does make life a little easier. Um, investing in good tools that you'll actually use is the ticket. If you um, invest in tools you, you never use, not the ticket. But sometimes you don't know until you invest in the tool, right? It's like a catch-22. So I'm just trying to share with you what I find valuable so that, you know, if you want to be a rounder, you can be a rounder. And I like, that's already looking pretty cool. This could also be turned into a really cool bookmark, um, which is something functional in that. Um, you could also put pockets on the back or the front and, and also use it as a bookmark, which is a really pretty thing to do. I think I'm going to go around in brown. Is that brown? Okay, this one is vintage photo, if I didn't say. All right. And I think we will just decorate this baby up a little bit so you can get an idea of the different kinds of things. You can do very easy, very quick, very simple. Again, very beginner friendly. Anybody can do this. You don't need to be a rocket science to have fun in the junk journal world. You don't have to be a great artist like Leonardo da Vinci to have fun in the junk journal world. You can just get in there and play with the papers. That's the whole idea. Just get lost in the process. Have fun. Kick your heels off. Get lost for a few hours. You're gone. They don't know where you are. They've been calling all day. You're not answering. Okay? I think what I am going to do, though, is fold on these the little white spaces between the pictures and just do this. All right. There, whoop, there we go. And I'm just going to do this. Now that's also giving me the idea. Not only can you use this as a belly band, you could also use it as a little trifold booklet, which would be very fun and cute to do. But we already did a little booklet, so I think I'm going to leave it as belly band. And then I would... This is the page in my journal. I'm just going to show you how I would attach it. I would glue it across the top, probably with Fabrifix because it's strong. Glue it across the bottom straightly. If I could do that better, I would. And then I would just put it on the page if this was a junk journal page. Now, because this is not a junk journal page, I can still use this because I can, I can shrink it down a little bit so it will fit in one of my junk journals. So, I mean, shrink it meaning pulling out the old this thing and tearing it around and then it will fit. Um, so there you go. I hope you like those fun little things. So this is called Dragonfly Dance. And uh, Sun Sunbun, what? Where? Where? Hey, you're up. No sleeping on the job. You're on the, you are on the couch hiding amongst the pillows. And um, I think it's time for a pup date. Um, yes, we have, we, they're waiting. I know, I know. Just make it quick and poignant. Okay? Okay. All right. Ready? And here we go. <coughs> Welcome, everybody. It's Sunshine Cup Up Reporter reporting from the Paper Outpost. It's DigiKit Day. New DigiKits are here. It's really exciting around here. There's like lots of fuss and hoo-ha going on. And um, um, that's all I got to say. Oh, that was pretty quick. Right. What do you want from me? I was sleeping on the couch in the pillows. And, um, were they comfy? Yes. And do you sometimes eat your snacks on the couch? It has been known to occasionally happen. The sunshine will take a snack onto his couch. Can we just say that again? His couch and have a snack. And where did sunshine learn this? From his mother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
All right, it's time you go back to bed now. We're just having enough of that sunshine out. Okay. <laughs> All right, very good. Okay, there you go. Um, so there you go, folks. The, that Just a quick review again. That is Dragonfly Dance. Really cool picks. Candy Vintage. Rosy Posy. Um, Santa's Workshop. And boop, boop. Fairy Flutter. So there you go. Lots of fun to pick from for November 2023. And take care. Um, if you are new, welcome to the Paper Outpost. And if you've been around, so happy to have you here. Um, remember, I have a free monthly email newsletter. If you sign up, you'll get a free digital image emailed to you every month. Check at the very bottom of the newsletter. for There's all sorts of freebies there. Um, a checklist of supplies, note from the bookmaker, which explains what a junk journal is and how to use it. And also a page list of ideas on how to break a blank page. So also, um, uh, my, have my videos, they come out Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays, 7 a.m. Eastern Time. My podcasts, which are audio, come out Tuesdays and Thursdays, and uh, new audio material. And then every day of the week, there are video podcasts uploaded for you to watch on Spotify. And I have an Etsy shop where you're going to find journals, fundals, bundles, kits, and fun things um, for sale when I have them available. Right now during this, um, uh, especially during November, I'm going to try and put up as many things for sale in my junk journal shop that are hard copy items like actual journals or bundle kits or things like that. So um, there are some things there for you to purchase. Um, I may do videos on them or I may just load them in the shop. So if you want to go over and check there periodically, you may strike it lucky. Um, I also sell digi kits in my Etsy shop. Yep. And um, fundles, which are the collections of old and interesting paper. Again, I do have the mega bonus Christmas fundle bundle special going on right now. Um, you can get that in my Etsy shop. And I also have the print and mail option if you would like to do something like this. But you, don't, you ain't got no printer. You don't like to print. You can't figure out how to connect your phone or your computer or your tablet to the you print. You know, I know. I know. I'll print 10 out for you just by the print and mail option. Send me the names of the 10 digi kits via Etsy message or Pam at thepaperoutpost.com. That's my email address, and I will print those out for you. Um, I have an Amazon shop. Um, if you like any favorite tools or supplies that you see me use here, I have a favorite tools and supplies section. I try and put links in there for you. And also, I have a merchandise shop. If you like the phrase create with reckless abandon or everything is a craft supply until proven otherwise, you can get that on a t-shirt, a sweatshirt, a zip tootie, a mug, a tote, or a water bottle. Great for gift giving this time of year for family, friends, or yourself, perhaps. And remember, most of all, most of all, remember that fun can be simple and create with reckless abandon, everybody. Till next time.